Hello, Hello. Everyone. and welcome to this new episode, number 33 of uh, Ask Ernst Live. That's right. So, big news today. Lots of new lots things. Of big news. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess one of the things is um, we're using new streaming software. So, Absolutely. Everything looks a bit different for us in the back end here as well. So, so trying to get used. Around. Yeah. yeah. So, make sure that all works. But it looks yes. like we've got quite a few online. All good stuff. And uh, lots of new features, actually, in this little uh, software, which hopefully is going to do better off the previous one. That's it. Reliability is what we're looking for. Absolutely. So let us know in the comments if you can hear us and see us. And uh, make sure you ask some questions as we go along. Yes. We'll, we'll answer them. So yep. uh, lots of things today. Yep. First we'll of all, we've got our standard ticket. got a yellow car here. Yes. So I know how much you love yellow. Absolutely. My favorite color. Yes. It's quite a few. We've been picking yellows from all different manufacturers from the shop. And we think there's about 200 different shades of yellow, apparently. It is a lot. So yeah, so lots of yellow. So let us know what card this may be. That's it. And uh, we'll get started. It looks like we've got quite a few people live already. So um, Mick, welcome, Mick. He was waiting for us. We've got some plastic kits for you today. That's right. I made sure. Because we haven't forgotten about you. I saw your little complaint. You're going to be fixed up. Uh, and so, yeah, kids are coming. Yeah, lovely weather down here. Big rain, big rain. So, but not flooding yet. Yeah. So, very good. So, what are we going to talk about? First of all, we need to wrap up the velodrome event. So, we've been talking about this velodrome event for a good part of the last six months since we were in lockdown from, yeah. from home, actually. We're streaming yeah. from home. And eventually, the event happened and was fantastic. It was ice. We still have two cars behind here. They're mostly working. Yes. And Except so, for mine. Uh, yours hasn't made it back to the shop, has it? No, it hasn't. It's, it's, it's a, a bit of an adventure there. It's a little bit bent. We'll uh, yes. we'll fix that. That's so, right. Let's bring some of this car here because I think there's some stories to be told. Yeah, for sure. I, so, I have to say that this is my favorite. So I think you've been really converted, haven't you? Going to the velodrome with a, a whole bunch of cars. I am. I loved it. It's good, isn't it? It was. Uh, there was. Uh, um, yeah, unexpectedly good. I thought going in, in circles may not be that, that exciting, but it was actually really good fun. Gets the adrenaline up. Definitely. And when you're driving in you know, 10 or 12 cars of different speeds, it's, uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely entertaining. Well, it's scary good. at the same time. Well, that's it. Well, we've got the good footage Absolutely. off your car. Yes. So we had the GoPro on top of your car, and you can see just how the cars are weaving in and out. Chasing the minis. Yes. Uh, surprisingly fast. Some of these minis go well over 80 k an hour. So on a big GT, it was literally... Mm. Um, struggle to, to overtake them, which is interesting, actually. Yes. So, definitely. Yes. Talking about minis, well, this is Brett and Joe's concoction. Project. Project. <laughs> yes. And this is phenomenal. If you see this one going on a straight, it was going more sideways than it was moving yes. sideways like yes. that. It was airborne, too, and that's when it slowed down before it hit back on the ground and took off again. Yeah, absolutely. So, impressive. Um, this is on a 3S battery, on a 4, or I think, 4 turn motor. Yes. It was brilliant. So, um, so this is a mini front wheel drive. Uh, so just front wheel drive. So we put uh, foam tires at the front to get yes. a bit more grip. Yes. Traditional rubber tires at the back. Yes. Uh, and that was a four, I think four turn motor and uh, 3S battery. Big gearing. Big gearing. Look at yes. this. You can see here. Yeah. But the big pinion. The spur gear and the pinion are virtually the same size. Yep. And it was a little rocket actually. Did have some issues. So you can see one of the. The wheel was there. Exploded. Yes, lost its tire there. So it wasn't going the same after that one. And then it did go through a few spur gears. That's no, right. actually, that was the first one. That first and only spur gear that we broke. So that's the first one. And yeah. then this is the still second okay. one is it's still on. Still on. So it's been yeah. pretty good. That one's all smooth now. It's got no teeth left. Uh, and I think that one of the best parts of this is this body shell, actually, on a mini. Make it very, very interesting. And probably well, really stable, too. That's right. Well, it was unexpected that it actually got it to fit. Fit really well, so it did. It did. You will find that you get a bit of error and issues. And so this one did have a, a body issue at the back, but you know you're there on the day. You fix it up. It all stayed on, and yeah, we got the video up. You can we see it going around. Hmm. So that was good fun. So I think there'll be a, a a remake next year or done. Actually, probably second part of the year. Yes. So We're there was such a good turnout that um, Tony Gray's suggested we'll do another one maybe after winter. Absolutely. So uh, keep your keep your eyeballs peeled. Uh, we'll announce it again, and uh, we'll get another another event going. Definitely. So and this is the GT. GT survived. GT went really good. GT went really yeah, well. So, so this started on a 6S battery, and the first so laps were quite entertaining. The, the car flew off. Yes. It just flipped. Yes. Uh, aerodynamic wasn't quite there. That's right. It was so, all catching on the rear end. Definitely. So we had to 
cut the body shot at the rear. Yep, chop chop. Chop chop. And uh, move a bit of weight forward, but otherwise this went really, really well. Uh, didn't have any major problems what actually. What's the top speed we got on this? 110, 109. That, that was the, the official clocked one yes. on the gun, but I think we went faster than that before. We definitely it. went faster before, yes. So we got well over 100 kgs, 110 and 20 mm. kgs an hour, which was uh, quite good. good. And the so best stable. part of that was really stable still. Yeah. So I think we can work on this to get it way above that. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to show the chassis, which is uh, quite well stretched now. Ah. There you go. Yeah. Turn left. That's it. So this part here is so that's polished or polished. Yes. Now you guys have a little question which I'll bring up on screen for everyone. Yeah, sure. The villain says, any pictures of the kit or both kits on our socials? Of this case? Oh, we're doing that case. Yes, we do. Uh, so with this one, there's a build. There's a build well. series. Yes. yes. So if you jump on the Hearn Service Racing, you will see quite a lot of uh, photos of this car being built. Yep. Uh, and there's a few other that we should. I think I shared to. them on the Velodrome event page as well. As well. Yep. Yes. And then there's the photos of this actual car as well on the day, all fitted out. Definitely. And then the video, of course. Absolutely. So definitely a winner. So there will be more work to do on this one. Yep. Uh, but this is probably one of the most performing car that we actually had out there. I think, I think this suits that particular Velodrome yeah. really well because it's got a lot of weight to it. It's got the good size to yeah. handle the bumps. Definitely. Um, it, it can take the really nice tires to handle the speed. Definitely. I think we should actually jump on a on the side camera here. Get a bit of a close-up. Oh, sorry, guys. Okay, we're gonna come back. Oh, soon. here we go. Let's see if you can show how worn are the tires here. Let's see if you can see. We've got some blistering. There we go. Maybe. There we go. Yep. You can see here. It's definitely pushing a lot. So actually, the, the rubber is is peeling off. It's uh, it's melting probably. Yeah, you can see how hard it's. High. Yeah, you see how hard it's been working because it gets to a temperature where it's actually picked up all the marbles off the track and yeah. it's stuck on the tire itself. So within it's a lap or so, it was full temperature. Mm. And it was really good fun. So it's good stuff. Very good. So that's for the velodrome. So thank you to everyone who come uh, come along. It was actually really good to see quite a few spectators as well. Yes, it's very unusual for um, radio control car events. It was definitely. Great to see a few people coming along. Well, we're definitely going to be there again. Absolutely. And we'll do a live there feed. We, so there we'll will be a live. Yes, yes, definitely. And so you can get a feeling of the atmosphere and what it's like getting cars going around. Absolutely. It's a great day. So, very good. All right. So, get the question through. I can see quite a few people online. So, Mike. I've got a couple of questions for you. Good to see you, Mike, yes. online. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, first one, which will come up on screen for you, is yep. from one of our YouTube videos regarding the, I think, the h Airflow airflow air extractor or painting oh yeah yeah someone asked, spray uh, booth. i was just wondering does the exhaust air really smell like paint or is it just a little because i live in a townhouse and i'm wondering if i have to worry about the exhaust smell so i guess it depends on the type of paint you use so mm -hmm. if you're using um, a regular enamel or an acrylic acrylic itself you have very little smell coming out of the exhaust um, enamel you may have slight smell um, solvents you'll get a stronger smell but um, a lot of it is trapped uh, within the, um, uh, the filter itself that's at the back of the uh, booth. And then if you actually have it driven out of the room, so out of window or out of door frame, then you'll get hardly any smell. It'll just basically be whatever's around you. Definitely. So a lot less than if you left a, a open bottle. Um, Definitely. But it cuts it back a lot. I mean, if you're using uh, solvent types like uh, lacquers, it's always better to wear a, uh, an actual uh, filtration mask as well. So full organic style. Definitely. And then that should cut out all the smell completely if you're really sensitive. Very good. Right. So moving forward. Yes. Um, this time with the lots of new releases. So we yes. briefly mentioned last week about Airfix, about uh, Hornby. And today we're going to talk about Tamiya. Tamiya was yes. a big announcement. Was it early this Huge week? Huge announcement. Huge I mean, announcement. It's, it's mainly because most of the announcements happen uh, at this time yep. in Germany. So Definitely. we've got the big um, uh, toy fair there. Um, obviously, most of the manufacturers have got new releases, but it's not uh, being held. So. To me, as they always do, they, they had a, a setup which looked like a little booth of yes. theirs, and uh, they made a presentation online. And, so um, we've got a few coming through a slide here. Yes. And so we're going to have a look at those. Meanwhile, yep. don't forget to let us know what car you think we may have here. So let's see. So let me put this up. Okay, we should be good. Okay. Okay. So. First of all, actually, not talking about Tamiya, we're talking about another Japanese product. I forgot about this. Yokomo. Yokomo. So yes. apparently, there is a new touring car 
uh, from coming. So an update of, to the BD10, which uh, we don't know the name yet. It will be announced probably tonight. Yes. So it could be a BD11 or BD10 2021, but yes, definitely yes. new car coming. So keep an eye on our social media. We'll, we'll let you know very, very soon what's that happening. It looks exciting. The, yeah, the, the picture looks exciting. Looks very interesting. Missing mm. shocks there for a start. Yes, very light looks promising. Yes, <laughs> very good. But let's go back to Tamiya. All right. Oh, this is probably that. the most exciting one. Look at this. Yes. So we had some video. I posted the video already um, a few days ago. So this particular car has got the, um, uh, what do you call it? The Caterpillar track um, attachments onto it. Great thing about it is they're actually individually linked tracks. You build them up yourself. Um, it's not just one rubber yeah. band. That's right. Of rubber. And then there's two types as well. So you've got a, a, a lower profile one yep. for sand and dirt. And then there's a grouser style one, which you can use on um, snow. snow. Ice, ice yeah. as well. Yes. So I think this is very innovative, actually. That's that's yeah. uh, that's uh, good to see something new, mm. something different. Uh, not for wheels anymore, no. for, for trucks. So trucks has released something like that last year on the TRX4 platform. Yep. But very nice one to me to come up with this. Yeah, it looks very funky. This concept. So it will be really good to see what uh, how this goes when it comes in. Yep. Uh, Top Falls Eve are probably one of the most, uh, I don't know, exciting releases for well, 2021. Well, it is exciting, it? I think. Uh, I mean, any anyone who's sort of my age, <clears throat> that was a kid, th this was released in the uh, early 90s to begin yeah. with. So this is the four-wheel drive platform, um, which was bent, uh, based on the Manta Ray. So you had the uh, Hotshot yep. uh, family, then you had your uh, Avanti family, yep. then you had your uh, Thunder dragon family and then you came out with the manta ray family right. so this is <clears throat> a fully worked up version of the manta ray every single conceivable option because at that particular stage to me i wanted to take it up a level and go competitive right. very competitive so back in the day a couple of people in australia did actually race these competitively uh, namely um locally louis solo ran it for a while and did very very well um it features um all carbon fiber chassis top deck lower deck uh, it's got the aluminium high cap dampers, uh, ball bearings all around as you expect anyway, uh, universal drive shafts, um, full titanium uh, screws. Yep. Uh, oh. And I mean, one of the features that really grabbed me was just the design of the body. It's just like a, a big, big wing. Yeah, big scoop. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I had the under tray, and then also you can see the the pro part of the chassis on the bottom of the chassis. You can see the three slots. Yes. So three slots on each side for the saddle pack yes. arrangement. So that was for really good um, balance. Balance. Yeah. Very, very nice. So looking forward to this one, actually. Definitely. I mean, this, this is uh, going to be one of the premier cars to get. So it doesn't just look good. It yeah. handles really well, too. Absolutely. Very good. Fighting Buggy. So this one is initially released in 1982, then released again in 2014. Yes. And we're back again. That's right. So, so this was back in the day at that time was the top of the range buggy. <clears throat> okay. So this is based on the platform for the Sand Scorchers and the Rough Rider. Um, and this was known as the Super Champ back then. Right. So the, the, the biggest difference or the originality of this one is the rear suspension had a monoshock yeah. that had a separate uh, bottle of oil at the back, which right. acted as a reservoir. Right. So I don't know, it worked really well. Didn't matter because it looks so cool. Looks looks impressive. That's right. Very good. So the Fighter Buggy RX Memorial. So that's the 25th anniversary here of this uh, of this. Uh, Buggy. Yep. It's very bling. Very, very special, actually. Yep. Uh, very goldy. Gold yes. wheels by the look of it. Yes. So, so the gold wheels sort of go back to the days of the Fox and the, the Super Shot. Definitely. Yep. And then black and gold have got that really prestige finish to finish, it. Finish, yeah. yeah. Even the body shell is quite different here. Yep. Very futuristic, actually. Yeah. Uh, we've got a Grasshopper 2 Black Edition. Yep. So just a pre painted body, I believe. Yes. Uh, coming on this one, black wheels as well. So just yep. a slightly different variation. Yeah. Uh, just so nice to... I mean, the good thing about the Grasshopper 2 is uh, it comes with the oil field shocks on it. Yes. Whereas the original Grasshopper and the, the Hornet had um, uh, just uh, friction dampers friction. on the front. Yeah. So it should handle a lot better, actually. It should mm. feel a lot smoother. For sure. Uh, going to road cars. Yes. Uh, there's a 4GT Mark II on that a TTO2 cool. chassis. Very, very yeah. nice. Looks like. To me, it's uh, lifting the game on the quality of the body shells. Yes. Yes. As much as uh, Kyosha had done in the past few years, they've got some really nice body shells coming For sure. Along. I mean, Tamiya had um, the reputation of having the best body shells available because they're, they're the only one that's, that did the um, uh, the split molding. Yes. So quite often you'll be able to get, like, you'll, you'll see the GD40 um, or the, the GD Mark II as it's known now. 
It's got the undercuts on the front. Yeah. So that's actually got molds that move inside like this and then pop back out. So a lot of the other brands, they had to have multiple piece, pieces. Yeah. yeah. But in recent years, Kyosho have been releasing some really well-finished body shells. They've been doing very well. Very well. And um, looks like this is coming back and doing something really, really Well, that's nice. good. It's just stepping up Definitely. the uh, uh, standard. And the quality. Yeah, definitely. So got a Ford Escort 1998, yep. uh, TTO2 chassis again. Very, very classic. Hmm. Um, then this Unimog 406 series U900 on a CCO2 chassis. This is yep. a classic. Look at the body shell. That's going to be phenomenal. Yes. Yes. So I, I'm sure the Unimog has been around before, but it was slightly, was it yellow? Was it orange, perhaps? I think. Oh, okay. That's yes. a different, I think the body must be different. Or the, the tray of the back looks different. Or the tray is different, yeah. Mm. It was a bit more modern, I think, the one we had before. Mm. It was an orange one. Yep. Uh, comical, comical hotshot. So Good continuing time. on on the comical uh, range. Yes. So we had the grasshopper, the hornet, what else? The, the frog, the frog, the venti, and yes. now the hotshot. Yeah. So the full family is almost uh, in a comical version by now. Yep. That's cool. Um, fire dragon and panda dragon. So these are the cars I was talking about a bit before. Yeah. So they're, they're the in-between chassis that um, were between the Aventi and the Manta Ray. So the Fire Dragon was already um, announced for a last year release. Yes. Uh, so hence, uh, oh, actually, it's a 2020 release. So it'll be coming out this year. And then the Thunder Dragon is a new release for this year. Definitely. So we should have them very So they're soon. a similar chassis, but you'll notice that the Thunder Dragon's got a monoshock and the Fire Dragon's got the twin shock. Twin shocks. Yeah. Plasma 2 in uh, Different uh, different coloring, purple and green. Yeah, so this body. is the, the, the color shift type yes. paint. Yeah, so it looks really cool depending on the angle that you look at the body. So we have a special nice body. Yes. Uh, finally, the Mercedes Benz Across Tipper Truck. So mm. this is quite nice. They've released the first one, I think, a couple of years ago. Yes. And it's quite impressive because it does have all the lifting kind of mechanism. Yes. It looks really, really realistic. Uh, that's sold separately. So if you buy the truck, you also need to buy the additional hydraulic set. Yes. But it makes for us something really, really special. Yeah, definitely. it's definitely very realistic. So moving on, plastic kits. Okay, so yes. So a lot of the aircraft guys are excited about this because definitely. there haven't been a lot of uh, aircraft releases from Tamiya. Uh, this particular version is the B of the uh, the Phantom. So 48 scale. Uh, quite a few other brands have been bringing out some Phantoms. Yeah. Um, quite often, Phantoms are very popular, but they lack a few details, yeah. uh, particularly in the engine nozzles. So we don't actually have a picture here, but they are available. I'll probably post them on Facebook at a later stage. The nozzles are so nice that quite often you get uh, resin replacements, but these I don't think you need to. They're very, Definitely. very crisp. 35th scale German Benzo Wagon 4. Yes. So this is the uh, is it G version or the F version? Um, G version. So. This particular one is a derivative of one of the early ones I had, yeah. so it was a short barrel. Uh, so it makes sense. They're actually updating a lot of their kits now. Yes. Uh, a lot of other brands have uh, uh, gone beyond and made uh, better uh, detailed kits. So they're freshening up their whole range. This is um, quite a popular model. The, the Panzer IV was used throughout the war, and it started off as um, basic infantry support, and then they started putting on the big guns so it could hit the, uh, the big Russian uh, uh, tanks. Yeah. Because of getting thicker armor. Um, Kittencraft Cred. I don't even know how you read that. I, I pronounce that wrong anyway. But um, th this is very, very popular. So Tamir had this kit initially, and they first had it since the late 60s. They've been selling all the way until a couple of years ago. So Dragon, in the meantime, made a really nice one. So it's it's about time that Tamir actually reproduced one in super super detail so this one looks really good it's got the trailer on the back as well with Definitely. some new figures and this vehicle is probably made famous to most people um but it was used in uh, the movie saving private ryan so this is what they call the rabbit at the end of the movie right okay so we've got the, the t-34 85 so this seems to be quite popular now uh, because russian um armor it, it's sort of been uh popular within the eastern bloc uh, mini countries, art, that's right. Mini art type manufacturers right. have quite a few of different ones. ICM and such. Yeah. Uh, Zvezda. Um, but they haven't been producing any of the really raw stuff like this, which would have been popular towards the end of World War II. So this is a late version of the T-34-85. So it's different to the original T-34 because it's got the bigger turret with the bigger gun, so 85 millimeter gun. And these would have been the tanks that they used to roll through into Germany 
towards the end of the war. So they were very common. Yeah. So it makes sense to have um, this particular kit. And this is in 48 scale. Very nice. Hmm. Cars. So this is pretty special. That's very, very special. So 2240ZG, which um, uh, was the sports car of Nissan. Uh, what was that again? Would have been in the late 70s, I think. Probably, yeah. So to me, it did have 12 scale kits of this, which yeah. were highly sought after now. Uh, they had the uh, 240ZG, as you see it like that, in that classic um, dark maroon. And they also had a Safari version. Um, but they were huge kits, and a lot of people didn't have space for those. So it makes sense to make a fully new tool 24 scale one. So as you can see, they've, they've got the cad drawings there with the full engine detail. And for sure, these are going to be beautiful kits, because to me, it always make, make really nice really car kits. Cars, yeah, absolutely. So one more car. Yep. So this is a rear release. So this is a super classic car, Definitely. too. So the Sauber C9. So Sauber, for a long time, were involved in racing with Mercedes. And it was only later that they involved themselves with Formula One. Formula one so yeah. that eventually became the Mercedes-Benz team. Um, but the C9, which uh, went around Le Mans, I mean, they were classic shape. And okay. they did very, very well. Very reliable cars. So McLaren Senna. Mm. So this is a, a, a fairly new uh, announcement. So I think uh, we already posted up some uh, photos yeah, of it yeah. about a month ago when they first announced it. Uh, supercar, uh, again, it's going to be a complicated kit, I think. I think it's got the opening doors and such for this one. Yeah. Uh, Even so, the interior details are quite impressive. You see this. Very nice. That's right. So this will be a bit of a challenge to build because of all the, the shapes you find on the bodywork. But as you see, um, again, they'll, they'll give you really high detail yeah. in one of these little 24 scale cars absolutely and that's it really okay i've got a question for you guys. yes well, more like a statement yes um tony says he has the original fire dragon but there's a nice little quote he gave oh what's it? Up on screen for you now yes it was actually you who sold him the fire dragon way back in hot, the hobby place in, on, when they were on one sale street oh did i oh thanks <laughs> i don't remember that but well that's a long time ago you still have it. He still has it. Yeah, he says he still has oh, it. Wow. Oh, you should probably bring it in. Actually, yeah, bring it, it in. Be, be nice to have it yeah, alive. Re I think. Re yes. Reunite. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, Captain S Man also says uh, he wants first dibs on the CCO2 Unimog. Very ah, good. Ah, okay, excellent. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's Very cool, good. Isn't it? Very good. Then, so exciting releases. So we'll be yeah, it's good. Yes, it's good. Here, so it's good. Just. Uh, Received the vanquish last week and looks like there is a lot more coming. So yes, no, it's good to hear. Looking so, to have a big restock around mid um, late March, yes. finally. There'll be lots of uh, classic Tamiya coming back at that point, should be good. Yes. And uh, should have uh, the new one soon after. Yes. The new one soon after, really. So, very good. So, good stuff. new kits. So, we're talking about kits. Let's uh, keep going, actually. New kits. Some new plastic kits. New plastic kits. Okay. This is this is specially for Mr. Neil. Yes. All right. Let's... Actually, do we have any guesses on the car in the meantime? Oh. Uh, no, nothing else yet. So let's see. Let's bring it a bit higher here. This should be an easy one to guess today. Just arriving stock, brand new, brand new release. Actually, let's see if someone can uh, can tell us what this may be. All right. These are um, these popped in last week. Yes. Now, these are quite large 24 scale airfix kits that haven't been around for quite a while. So, it's a part of the vintage range, isn't it? Really, really it is. from Tamiya. So, from my airfix. Yes. So, I mean, the kits, they do date uh, quite far back. So, they could be going into the late 60s into early 70s. But they are a very big kit. And at the time, these were the kits to get. There wasn't anything bigger. Um, I think they retail for just over $100 now, which makes them still very, very uh, good value. So they've got all full engine detail, um, full cockpit detail. Uh, so if you're interested in um, anything sizable, a bit larger, but, yeah. but not too complicated, I guess, uh, these are really good to, uh, to go with. Yeah. yeah. So this is part of their vintage range. Now the thing about the vintage range is they're not always available. So I assume that these will uh, stop production in Very a couple of months. Yeah. And then they'll re-release them again. So in a few years. Yes. Yeah. So if you are a collector, then these have been very hard to find. So you might as well pick them up while you can. Um, but if you're into building, uh, then any of these is a good pick. I mean, I quite like the, uh, the Messerschmitt, uh, the 109. Uh, Spitfires are always uh, uh, very popular. And then you've got the Hurricane too. So yeah, three to choose from. So I was actually quite surprised to get three Definitely. all at one time. All three, yeah. 
definitely. Yeah. So we have a few airfix restock last week, so yep. good to see stock coming through again. So yes. this is uh, something to me apparently arriving very soon as well, just a bit of a restock. So good. But we also received quite a lot of uh, bit more exotic type kits, which is uh, which is good. Yeah, these are bit so different. We have uh, something from Bronco. We haven't had Bronco. around in the shop for some time i think no it has been and long. uh really good to see a few a few uh new brunt got so uh it's really interesting that, uh, the british uh 17 pounder which is this one and then the both fours too which is quite um interesting as well because i mean both of these um uh, guns were very uh, heavily used during the second world war um and these were quite often used by australian troops as well so the great thing about bronco is um I mean, this is a decent sized box for actually uh, an artillery piece, simply because it's got so many parts in them. Yeah. And the parts count is amazing. So you've got little small uh, bolt heads and such. Yeah. Really good. Okay, so they're the bigger kits. So, got a small one here. Yeah, so this is actually really interesting. So this is by Rish. So Rish is another Chinese company which um, has really complicated um, kits. Now, this is a universal carrier, which is also known as a brain gun carrier. And they make a whole series of these. So this is the uh, machine gun version of the Mark II. They've got a Mark I and a standard Mark II as well. And these are used by all the Commonwealth troops. So yeah. Australians had these, uh, the British obviously, and Canadians. And you just look at the size of the box. I mean, when you build this, it's only going to end up this big. Well, and it feels quite heavy too, actually. It does. So full. it's got full engine detail, full interior detail, and pretty much all the parts are individual, except for the tracks. So the tracks have got a semi-individual track system, so right. it, don't, it won't make you go crazy doing individual tracks because it's so tiny. It'll work. Yes, and it'll give you a really nice um the sag along the sides as well. So that's really good. So universal carrier, bring gun carrier, because the Tamiya one is very hard to find these days. Um, and then some of these figure kits are really interesting. I thought so between Rich and Bronco, we've got um all right. There's two Rich ones, and there's a Bronco one. But this is quite interesting because this is um uh. A, they call it God's blessing. So we've got the the priest out the front having a little um, a sermon amongst the, some American troops. I've seen this actually built in a diorama, which was really nice. Um, I've just a, a, a blown up um, church, so I just had the church facing with the uh, yeah. the altar. And then you've got this one, which is um, Road to Victory. So it's got uh, Winston Churchill. Um, and it's got Montgomery, and then there's another general here. So who's he? He is. Brian Horrocks, and then there's also Pamela Churchill as well, which is um, uh, Winston Churchill's um, daughter-in-law. And then we've got this one here, which is called East Meets West. So this is when the Americans met up with the uh, the Soviet troops uh, on the Elbe River in Germany, 1945. So just to um, make all the posing more interesting, so they're not stiff, stiff, yeah, they're just standing around, and they're not just stuck in combat. So it's much different. more character. Just yeah. to Give more depth to dioramas, actually. Yes, so, right. that's really, really good. good. Very good. So quite a few plastic kits coming through, which is yes. nice. Yes. Looks like we've got a good guess on the on the car up here. So. Mm -hmm. So E H Holden Ute. Yes, it is. It, uh, it is. is indeed. Very special livery too. Yes. So what is the livery on this one? Might be hard to see, which is probably good because otherwise that would have just it, given too away. Too easy. Yes. Yes. So it's written on the door, very classical um, branding and logo. Absolutely. And yes. I've seen today they are also going to release a different one. In oh, a red really? version, yes. Red version. Red version. Oh, be another one for the next coming months will be probably uh, towards the end of 2021 will be a red version of this one with a different uh, different markings. It's cool. be quite nice. So I really like this one because you can actually open the. Oh, the cover! Yep. I didn't know that. Comes off. Yep. And it's got like a nice wooden finishing in there so we're gonna have a good look at it later on i like the sun visor that's classic yes. that's very well made too and you've got the rear yes nice so mm. something we should uh quickly have a look we received the easy line it's not something oh, we really? talk about very often but it's a really interesting product which uh comes from uh, i think usa is that correct it does so i think we showed some of this a couple of months ago and it's been really popular and we've got a new lot in so different colors so, so as i lay them out you may not be able to see them all there this side but you can sort of see on the bottom of the different colors of these so the thing about easy line is yes. it's a uh it's an elastic thread 
Right. It's very fine. So the fine there's two um, thicknesses. There's a fine and a heavy. The yes. finest one from memory is 0.3 millimeter. Yes. And the heavier one is 0.5 millimeter. Definitely. And these are quite often used for doing the aerial law lines on aircraft and on ships. And then also on World War One aircraft. So when you're doing the reading. Or the reading. Yeah. Because yep. yep. one of the, the hardest things to do, if you use a really normal fine line, yep. you can't tension it properly. That's right. And it can feel too loose or yep. you tension it too much and, and then you it break just it. warps everything. Yeah. Yep. But because these are elastic, you just pull them to a particular point, uh, put a double super glue on it, super glue sits, you'll leave it alone, trim it, it's ready to go. Yeah. So even if you accidentally snag it, it'll just stretch and bounce back. And the other popular uh, way of using these, which is the main method for these, is for doing telegraph lines on train sets. That's right. That's right. So, and you can imagine, you know, you've got this whole layout, you've got all this line going all around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, you reach yeah. over, you're going to flick something. It's perfect. Yeah, very nice. So, so yeah, so the most common one is black. Black seems to be the most popular. Yep. Uh, so, uh, and then we've got different colors. So, what is, is it? Salmon? So, or so that one, oh, they call it rope color. Rope color. So, so rope. More. You got rope. Uh, this one is obviously black. Black. That blue. looks like black as well. Okay, so this is this one's a rust rust. color. You got green. Uh, uh, it's rust one? again. There's it's a different rust. It's a dark, oh, no, similar actually. And then there is a green. And the green, yeah. The green one. So. So for any application, and even if you can't find the right color, you know, you can paint it. Paint it over, yeah. yeah. I think it was a white one from memory too, or, or kind of uh, there is a white one, creamy, but, light yeah. cream, yeah. Yes, but the white one is not so uh, common because it's really yeah. hard to see, really. Very so good. that's easy line. So yeah, if you can't find easy line, because a lot of people have said they they found it difficult to find, then we've got the, a full complement of it in the shop. Definitely. Hmm. Um, in the meantime, I've got a question here. So, yes, uh, are any My Hero Academia kits on the way? We, we have it. Yeah, we've one, got one. My, yeah, you have um, Midoriya. Midoriya, yes. Oh, okay, I'm not very familiar with it. So, is yeah. this a different kit we're looking for? A different character? Kind of oh, I don't really know. I, I assume there would be if there's one already. So, that was part of the entry grade range from Bandai. I oh, assume they're right. going yeah. to start be quite a lot more, yeah, coming. releasing more yeah. throughout the year. Definitely. So mm. there'll be more. Yeah. Very good. So um, let's see. There's no more guesses on the car today. Oh, come on. This is a classic. All right, right, right. Let's pull it back to where it's more focused. Met more visible. Yes. How's that? We established that is a EH Ute yes. by Holden. Yes. We want to know what color, what um, markings yes. really is representing. Mm. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about controllers now. Now you're 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 in this halfway house where you're yes. trying to choose yes what ready control Absolutely. okay so these these are top end controllers for ready control vehicles so we had a conversation probably last year about these two controllers when I think this was just released yes but uh, you know in the past few few months I've been um, Looking at controllers, be more carefully um, for a couple of reasons. Um, well, one was a velodrome event, wasn't it? It was a velodrome event, and luckily we had our spare controller. Um, but mostly because someone is becoming a bit harder to, to source in Australia, so availability of receivers and, and support is a bit more uh, uh, difficult recently. And uh, uh, also because uh, most of our staff are actually using Futaba, so as we exchange cars, it's, it's more convenient to use Futaba. So. We just uh, pair different receivers, so yeah, it makes it easier. In the last couple of weeks, I've been um, trying to play with this one, and uh, it's one of these things where you're used to controller. It's very hard to to change actually, because control is something very special that you need to have a good feel in your hands. Hmm. And I still really like this someone. It feels really natural for me, um, but I'm trying really hard to shift to Futaba. So well, there's a lot of people that like the Futaba. Absolutely, it's all got to do with um, the balance of it. Because it, it is basically an extension of your body to control Absolutely. the vehicle. Definitely. So, you know, so this this is the 7PXR, which is the latest release. And um, I haven't used Futaba before, and I have to say that it's actually really well well designed. The software mm. is really easy to use. Yep. Um, very adjustable, so you can adjust the tension of the steering wheel. Yep. And it also give you a larger steering wheel, actually. Let's show this one here. Does it drop down as well, is it? There's a drop down and a larger steering wheel. So you can change oh, okay, the, yeah, wheel. the field there's, uh, the there's a drop down with the different, different angles as well so yep. you can have a slight different angle towards I think either way probably more towards the front yep. uh, the wheel has um, two different compounds of rubber that is a stiff rubber on the inside and a softer on the outside oh really so it's actually really nice it's got a very nice feel oh there is too yeah and um, 
and then as i said they give you the bigger one so if you prefer to have a slightly larger wheel you can go for that uh, so you can adjust the tension there yep. you can adjust the position the tension of the trigger as well which is which is something really important yes for me Futaba always had a softer trigger compared to um my care that we were using before always like it was a bit more uh, um a bit stiff a bit, a bit harder to pull yep. had a bit more feel but you can also change um that little um outlet here you can change the, the spring tension on the trigger too can't and you? you can change the spring tension as well so yep. it's very adaptable actually mm. um and so as you do your your adjustment you start feeling a lot a lot nicer actually yes so the software i think is quite interesting too first of all is a full touch screen compared to a part touch screen that you have on the uh someone someone yes. is not touch screen you need to use this panel here uh which effectively has full few position which you can actually uh it's use just, as a touch a, just a navigation touch, just a navigation it? yeah yep. navigation but they're here the full screen is that screen yeah uh and is really really intuitive so you get a full keyboard when you want to change for example the name of the uh of your model yes. then in this case here you need to scroll through each letter oh, and yes. then press which Yes. which is uh quite time consuming so definitely yeah. a bit more up to date yep and uh what else um i think overall seems to be quite nice uh nice option so, so what do you feel at the moment you're still feeling like oh, yeah i'm still, still 50 preferred? 50 but i think i will end up going for the photographer really as you get used to it as you use it for a little bit it definitely gets more um more comfortable yeah but both really good radios overall uh another thing i really like on this one is the binding process the binding process is really really simple so as you enter the binding uh menu you just press the link you press the link button on the controller on the receiver and within like four or five seconds it's done really makes sense doesn't really it? makes really sense. easy if you remember we had to do a quick receiver swap oh, at the yes that's me yeah, and, my fault. Uh, and that was uh, a really quick change actually it was i was surprised because yeah. everything just works straight away so yeah I, I think these guys have done quite a lot of work on on the software to make it really user friendly yeah uh, it's very adjustable the menu you can change quite a few things and uh and navigate through different menus really really quick so I, I definitely really like that so let's see if you can hmm. put this on actually it's interesting I mean on the screen you see they look really big but compared to old radios these are actually very very light and very lightweight yeah so let's jump to this side here as you can see oh see there we go so it's a full color display so you got all your um all your uh trims here the menu is a touch screen so you go through the menu the old your uh, uh oh, i put it in a different language actually so you go different models they can choose if you got a pair of different receivers you can easily um change from a a model to another so it's connecting to the other one it's restarting yep. and off you go again so very user friendly you can change the color of this light here and uh you have overall quite a few buttons so you can program to do all sorts of different uh different things here you got timers so both of these radios can you switch you can switch them can't you from left to right hand use you can definitely switch them from left to right hand yes so yep. you can see on this in this case here you got all the hardware right to remove the wheel from the front yep put it to the back so if you're left-handed yep you can go left-handed <laughs> <laughs> obviously you're not i'm not <laughs> so and uh, i'm pretty sure you can do the same here there's a couple of screws here yep. they will pretty much mirror everything across yeah so Hmm. and uh and so these are the two top of the range uh controllers that i've been using racing at the moment yep. being the futava 7 pxr and the somewhat m17 which are a bit too good radio so speaking of the m17 you've got a question yes let me see i don't see the question yet ah oh, here we go find it so uh somewhat m17 here has a better response for high speed racing on and off-road well, that's an ongoing argument, I think, between manufacturers where they all claim to have a better response. But I think at this point in time, the response are very, very similar. Um, yeah, I think it's, I guess it's with any technology, you get to a yeah. point where it catches up with human yes. speeds. And I think at this stage where we're at, we're at a stage where someone can say on paper that it's actually faster. Yeah. But when you realistically touch it, you can't actually tell the difference. Probably. And quite often you, you tone them down because sometimes when you've got high speed servos then high speed response when it's, it's almost instantaneous touchy, yeah yes w one thing i would say when you as you upgrade your radios if you do every few years and you upgrade radio and server you can definitely feel the 
uh, development, the, the speed, you feel more connected yes. to the car. I've, I've noticed it last year when I bought the, the, the M17 from my old KO and I upgraded the servo to an MKS servo. It was a huge difference uh, straight up. You could feel a lot more connected. But I have to say that when I use the someone or the Futaba, it's very, very similar. You, I don't think you can pick the difference. No, I think if you're talking the, about the same generation, they'll be very similar. Correct. The transmission speed, it's, it's you know, we're talking about milli, milli, millisecond really yes. so it's virtually negligible so from a testing perspective it could be but from a practical perspective probably probably not i guess it comes down to personal preference mm. uh, cosmetics yes uh usability of the menus and yep. after all um the feel actually when you hold it well that's the important which, part isn't which it? is i guess the most important part and that's why they give you all these different wheel drop downs and accessories so you can actually customize the radio to to your likings really so Hmm. I think uh, I think that's um, that's the key, really. Got another one there for you. So I have a seven PX. My main reason for picking it up over the M seventeen was the cost of the receivers. Oh, really? Um, yes, I think uh, the Futaba receiver are a little bit cheaper. Uh, that's interesting because this package here um, is about thousand dollars roughly, and they give you two receivers. Uh, and also the charger. So this one comes with the battery uh, with a uh, let me turn this off. Lithium polymer, I think, is the life battery. So it's a 1100 milliamp uh, milliamp uh, life battery. Yep. And the charge is actually included. So a fully approved Australian charger. But there, with the M17, you don't get a charger uh, and you don't get the battery normally. But the nice thing about the M17 is that it does have a USB charge here. So you pop in a micro USB in here. Oh, I guess most um, people is, will have that anyway, wouldn't they? Most people will have one and you can charge it. Yep. So uh, there's pros and cons, but I have to admit that the package of the uh, Futaba is very complete. So two receivers, yep. which are worth about $100 each of the latest generation, yep. plus the battery and the charger, and also the screen protector. Mm. Which, yes, uh, so which is included that, yeah. uh, here. So that's your screen protector you get on the on the Futaba, which yep. is something you should really put on as mm -hmm. you as you race. You get greasy and dirty hands. It's always nice to have a nice screen protector. Yep. Uh, and definitely, cost of receiver is uh, a little bit cheaper than the Futaba compared to Sunwell, Even though somewhere we can really source receivers at the moment, which was one of the reason we ended up uh, using this one last weekend. So. You've also got a guess from Tony, as always. Aha, uh -huh. Tony's guessing, so. Yes. Yeah, I think Tony has it. What's he got? Golden Fleece Ute. Golden Fleece. Indeed. Who remembers the Golden Fleece? Absolutely. So that's a that's a good uh, a good guess. So. Very good. Let's see if you have any questions on controllers, actually, while we are discussing this. Yeah. I think it's a very important aspect. Uh, yes. Oh, there's yeah. so many settings, actually, that, you know, it's important to... Uh, always kind of consider when you buy a controller, but also when you use it, make sure you use all your uh, uh, endpoint adjustment. So you should probably talk about it at some point. Endpoint yes. adjustment, all the exponentials, so the speed of response. Yes. So you can decide how sensitive it can be. Uh, yeah. Around the middle the or around the outside. Around the outside, specifically at the velodrome, that is a very important aspect. Yes. Because you want to have uh, different feels. So you don't want to have too much sensitivity in the center. You want to just do some fine adjustments. Yep. And the same on the throttle, you can have less adjust, less sensitivity at the beginning, so you don't have much wheel spin. Yes. So lots of that settings possible, actually. Mm. So pretty good. No, they're good. Very like good. Them. So let's see. So at this point, I think we have uh, uh, one vote for the Futaba. And let me see. Let's see if we get any more votes. We could leave this one here as well and see if you get votes as we go along. Yeah, sure. On what is the one preferring? Okay, so let's pack this box away. Yep. Okay, so we received some paint brushes actually. We did. We did. So, so let me just get them out here. There's, there's a lot of them. Let me try and pick them all up. So paint brushes have been has been in in a, in a shortage for quite a few months now. They have been. And finally, after probably two months of traveling from Germany, yes, they made it here. Yes, they came about. A small box, a boat. So uh, transportation has been quite challenging, but we been. have brushes again. So these are the um, signature, or now known as the Nine Steps signature brushes. So they just came in shortly. Um, we've got all the different sizes now. So this is a synthetic, the synthetic um, version. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got a synthetic, uh, very very fine uh, bristle. 
Uh, so we've got the really tiny ones. I don't know if you can really see here. You might have to yeah, jump on this one. So this is a 10-0, the finest ones we've got. So maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but yeah, that, that is tiny. So that's the size I'll be using for doing um, eyeballs on 32 scale figurines and any other fine details as well. So you could use that for doing the edging on, uh, say, chrome, on, say, car, uh, window uh, seal type of thing. But we've got all the sizes from um, uh, in the round type brushes yes. from 10-0 yes. all the way up to twos. Yes. And then we've got the flats as well. So we've got some, some flats like this, so finer flats. And they go from uh, size zero all the way up to five or six. six yes, I think. Yeah, a bit larger. Yeah. So these are really handy for doing all the broad areas. And each one of these, they've all got the same bristle on them. They're really well priced. So the performance you get out of these um, is really outstanding. Yeah. I mean, these, these start from around about six, six or seven dollars. Five, six dollars. I think it's even less. So there's right. more one of four ninety nine from memory. Five ninety nine. Yeah. And these are made in Germany, so it's really high quality product. Yes. Um, and we have the Sable version as well. Of the That's same. right. So Sable ones cost a little bit more. Uh, the Sable is a, a natural fiber. Yes. Um, simply because they have a, a finer uh, end to the uh, each bristle. Definitely. And they also last a bit longer if you take care of them. They, they have a slightly different shaped handle. So they've got the uh, thicker black ones, yes. which are easier to hold. But we have them all in stock now. Um, so it's good because when you paint, you need good brushes. brushes and definitely. you don't have to spend a lot of money on good brushes. Definitely not. And if you maintain them and keep them clean and dry them up and yes. even use the, the the brush conditioner, yes, they will last quite a quite a long time, really. So yes, here we go. Well, these are the brushes I've been using for basically a year and a bit. Uh, I've started using the gold hand ones now, but um, it's a big price difference, definitely. Um, and these ones work just as well. Okay, so, so these nine are the brushes. Nine step, yeah. Very good. All right, so got another bit of a. Cheeky remark from oh. the villain saying they've got a running joke on their track where you don't crash a two thousand dollar kit with a fifty dollar radio. Absolutely. So that's a really good advice. So you know you don't have to spend a thousand dollar for a good radio. There's some really nice radio for you know a couple of hundred dollars, but that's yeah. a really good advice. You know, some of the fifty dollar radios they're perfectly fine for your say Tamiya um Hornet kind of package. Yes. But if you start going, you know, 80 Ks an hour. I don't think it's ultra safe, really. No, um, probably not. It, it, it's probably a entry level for Tava. Um, I think it's called a three PV. Would be a good starting point. The three PV uses the same receiver that's compatible with the higher end radios. Yes. And so at least you have a guarantee that the signal is going to be there all the time, really. Yes. So, uh, very, very good advice, actually. Mm. Not, not quite a joke. It's actually a very important, uh, important thing to consider when you, when you drive a two thousand dollar car. Well, that's the connection, isn't it? Absolutely. Between you and Absolutely. your loved machine. Definitely. So. All right, so go, going towards the end, but we have a very exciting announcement actually on the Hans workshop. We have. So we've been working really hard on uh, some more uh, new material, I guess. Absolutely. Since uh, Christmas, because Christmas was a bit busy, we had a bit of a break. Um, but let's see. Um, so let's uh, grab a few of the figures. So how about I'll just hide this here so I can't actually see. It's a bit of, bit of secret. All right, so you might have seen that I've been um, showing how to use uh, Scale 75 paints. So there's a, the figure there of the girl walking, and there's a figure as you'll get it uh, in its raw state. So from this, quite easily, you can get it to this point here where you get a really good uh, realistic finish. And then, sure, did you show this? Uh, I'm not sure we showed this before, but we are finalizing uh, this week or probably early next week the full range of uh, or a range of 24 scale figures specifically oh. designed for. Uh, for uh, slot car. Oh, 30 seconds ago. 30 seconds, sorry, yes, 30 yes. seconds, yeah. Yep. Diorama, uh, slot car dioramas. Yep. And so these are some of the funnel reductions. Uh, let's see if we can go on the side here. There we go. So this will be available in uh, 24, 30 second uh, different scales for yep. dioramas and, and as we said, slot cars. Yep. But, uh, uh, and this one as well. So it's called the Lady Walking. So this was one of the first that we developed. That's effectively this one before and after. Yes. So you get it like this, and you can paint it like this. So we've done quite a few tutorials. So we had the number two. We've done number two, and, and we're, we're about to produce number three. Number three. Yep. Uh, and so all this uh, tutorial will show you how to go from this point here all the way to this point here. Yes. So, uh, it's not very difficult, and we've done this with the scale seventy-five paints, uh, which has probably been quite quite nice and. 
Yeah, they're versatile, actually. No, they're really good to use. Yeah. But, actually, this... before showing this one, I think it would be better if we use this everything. one and do the reveal. Absolutely. All right, so when I bring this up, you might have an idea of what it could be okay. based on. So let's move some of the stuff away. Perhaps. Yep, let's see. Just pop this over here. Let it come here. So we've been working on this project for a little bit, and this is the first of quite a few probably coming in the, in the next few months. So I okay. it had been worked. Shall we fire it up? Go for it. Do you see him coming? Here he comes. Here we go. Let's see if you can guess. What, what is this? this? Man be? So this one um, has been really well designed by Warwick. So he's come up with the... And painted as well. Yes, he painted it too. So the last night. This is a fully designed project. So we've designed this, Warwick designed this in-house and uh, painted up as well. So yes. this finished model and it's fully fully functional, as you see. There he goes, around the other way. So let's see if you have any guesses. What this could be? <laughs> the cars do give it away. Thomas the tank, the engine? Maybe not. No, it's not Thomas. That's not Thomas Nick. It's got Try a, again. It's got more Australian name than Thomas. That's it. Yep. I think it's Bruce. Let's see, Nick. Try, try hey. again. Plugger. <laughs> Plugger. Wasn't Plugger the name of the chicken? No, no guesses. No guesses. No guesses. Come on. That's, that's... So, uh... Come on. Or maybe we need to put it up close to the close-up camera. All right. I think Nick, Nick has it. Has he? And he suggested that John be pleased as he used to drive a tram. So John yes. was actually here this morning. He was. Very nice to see John uh, after quite a few months. And he was definitely pleased to see this one. He saw this in there. He was the first one to see the project finished. So <clears throat> he's going to hurry now. He's moving around really quick. So... Someone suggests it could be Malcolm, but as they <laughs> suggest, he's a W class uh, tram. It is indeed. Shall we call it comical? We'll call it comical, yeah. So it's been stylized, so it fits a nice, cute little chassis. Yeah. So it's running on uh, N scale. Um, I don't know. What, what sort of scale would you call that? I don't know. I'm sure it definitely is uh, shorter. Yes. So uh, this was one of the first projects, so we'll probably develop this on a normal size chassis as well. Yes, uh, but this is a W class tram, uh, and uh, it comes in a kit. Do we have it there? So this is this is the initial way it's going to be presented. Available, yes. So let's so let's have a close look here. on it. There you go. So so as you see, you're going to receive it like this. You can have your number uh, numbers that you can. Install on the top here. Yep. So give you a spare one in case you lose one in the carpet. That's very yes. common. Yes. Uh, but that's how it comes. And uh, it's, it's designed to have uh, minimal support. So it's really easy to prepare. Yep. So you crack it off and you're pretty much ready for uh, for painting. Minimal finishing required. Yep. Um, and it's ready to go. Yep. So it's designed to fit onto a Kato uh, chassis. chassis. So Kato chassis is a really high quality, guaranteed um, uh, reliability and smooth running. So it just clicks over the top. Definitely. Yep. Bit of primer, bit of paint. You can so you can paint it into any of those liveries. I mean, this, this is a classic Met livery. You can always do the brown as well, or the city circle, or even make um, one of the, uh, the old dinner trams, which we used to see running around Good. as well. Yeah. And uh, so we'll be selling these as a as a uh, uh, kit right. with a chassis, or just a um, just camera. a body, just yeah. the body itself. Yeah. And then you can choose if you have a, that chassis already, you can pop it in, or yep. you can buy the full uh, the full kit ready to go. Yep. And so uh, there you go. Hopefully it's been as exciting as it was for us. Yes. yes. It was a slow, slow pick up. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. So we'll be working at other projects uh, in yes. the railway as well. So as, as you see, we're going from detailing plastic kits, mm -hmm. yes, figures, dioramas, and, uh, and also some... Uh, Oh, these are trains. That was quick. Yeah, sorry, I went the wrong way. So this Kato chassis, as you can see, they are really, really good. They're really yes. capable, very smooth, uh, and uh, 
specifically the loss speed actually, she tried to go really slow because the end scale historically wasn't really good at lower speed. Yeah, and as you can see, this is actually really, really nice. Look at this. So yeah, so if it were a little micro layout, perfect little size, definitely make a little um, uh, map of Melbourne around the center. That's there. it. Look fantastic. So it's really good. Like it. Very good. I'm glad you like it. I like it. Very I good. like it a lot. Um, in the meantime, speaking of the the our parents' workshop, yes. uh, we do have a question from someone on YouTube from earlier this week. Yes. Uh, I'll put it up on screen for you. Sure. Uh, Fat Gunpla Builds said that they want to change the color of their kit from a dark blue to a light gray. You, uh, this is based off the Scale 75 tutorial. How? What is a recommended primary and surface that they should use to change color? So they mean the plastic was a dark, dark blue. So so just a gray primer would be fine. Yeah, cover it all yeah, up. That's right. Again. Yep. So a local light, a light primer that you've seen in a lot of my tutorials so far. So I quite yeah. often use the uh, either the Tamiya yeah. white or the gray, gray. or the um, the Mister surfaces as well. So that's a nice light gray. It's it's a very neutral tone, and then you'll be able to cover that with anything. I, I guess if you want to cover it with uh, white. Or uh, yellow, then a white primer would be better. Definitely. But anything else, the greys are fine. And Tony is asking, what other projects for Hearns Workshop we have in the pipeline? Good question. Yes. A lot. A lot. So uh, we've got a lot of um, ideas from before Christmas as well. Okay. So we still want to do uh, some pilot figures. So a yeah. lot of people were asking for seated pilots. So for some reason, pilots are not really included in aircraft kits anymore. So we'll try and do that. Of various types we need to finish up the 350 scale uh little figures for ships yes so yes. That, that will come very soon yes uh, what else do we have um uh, also we, actually quite a lot of figures um figures to see uh gundam definitely yep. yeah yep. so one to 144 and one to 100 scale yeah and then we will have let me see um some more diorama world war ii products yes kind of accessories that we've been discussing just earlier today yes There'll be some of that stuff coming and I guess you can keep suggesting, really. So when we talk about this, just drop a message, and we can add it to the list. Um, you know, we review our schedule like quite often, and we mm. can bump them up if there is a bit more demand. Yes, we're working to a few more of these kind of projects, like these yes. trams and different yeah. uh, kind of train-related uh, accessories. What else do we have? That's it, really. Yeah, so far. The list goes on. Yes. So we have some anime yeah. figures that we've been uh, oh, working. Yes. That's a very nice one that that we should. Uh, Hopefully, have ready in the near future. It will yes. be a very exciting release, actually. Yes. What else, Tony? What would you like to see, actually? Mm. I've got a question for you guys. Yep. Yeah. Do we have any news updates from our last live stream where we spoke, we showed off the photography and the pit crew? Uh, uh, from that will be probably live in on the website in the next few days, really. So, pretty much ready to go there. Definitely so. Mm. Very right, good. So, yeah. All right. So, a little W class. If there's any other questions, we'll wait a minute. Otherwise, I think we're almost at the end for this episode number 33. Mm, we haven't missed anything, have we? I don't think we have. Did you everything in? I think we have. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. I think we should also show again this exploded wheel. It was. This is what happens when you go really, really fast. Really fast the Velodrome. Really fast. So let us know if you have any more questions. Otherwise, we'll be almost at the end for today. Well, I guess talking about the Velodrome, if anyone's got some footage, if you can just please share it with us, I'm sure a lot of people would like to see it. So please share it on our regular Facebook um, feed or even on the uh, the event. Definitely. So the Facebook event for the Velodrome can be great. Very good. Mm. All right, then. So, all right. So we've got our radios, cars all being picked. Absolutely. The train is still running. He is. He's going to run for ages. Yeah, been running for an hour this morning. But BJ <laughs> yes. was testing the equipment here. Yes, that's right. A bit of soldering to get this little layout happening. Yep. And uh, yeah was running so thank you tony thank you for joining us again and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon we'll see you again next friday af afternoon at 2 p.m same place yes same place looks like this same time streaming software was definitely an improvement no, it's been good it's been quite smooth yeah so we'll stick with this one and so we, it's quite nice we can put a comments across as well so everyone can read them yes and uh have a good weekend we yep. shall see you next friday that's it thank see you, you for watching bye, -bye. see you next time